first thing you want to describe is what is the exposure. The second thing is what are the potential health effects related to those exposures. And number three is what are action items that the family can take to reduce children's exposures everywhere they live, learn, eat, sleep, and play. So first you want to define what are phthalates. And phthalates are plastics or plasticizers that are added to everyday goods. And they potentially leach from those chemicals. And concerns have been raised because they have hormonal activity. And so they're known to be anti-androgenic or anti-testosterone. So that's the definition of what are phthalates. Now when you're talking about health effects, you want to say that the key health effects, um, because they're anti-androgenic, um, we think that the male reproductive tract is uniquely vulnerable to these exposures. And so this has been described as phthalate syndrome and includes things like hypospadias, a decreased anogenital distance, um, infertility, and altered uh, testosterone levels, for example. And then finally, you want to leave families with key action items that they can take with them to empower them to reduce exposures um, for children. So that includes looking to recycling labels. So recycling labels give you an idea about whether or not um, those products contain phthalates. So um, the number three recycling label can identify those products with phthalates in them. You want to keep it simple, less is more when it comes to personal hygiene products. So choose um, products that are fragrance free and that's a way of um, choosing products that are phthalate free. And then another um, nice message for families is to think of the recycling labels 5, 4, 1, and 2 as being the safer plastics and numbers 3, 6, and 7 as being the plastics to avoid. And you want to avoid putting those in the, in the microwave or the dishwasher because exposure to high heat promotes leaching. Uh, wallet size cards outline those plastics that are safer versus the ones that are of concern. Um, there are a number of key resources that pediatricians can turn to if they have environmental questions. Um, the first great source to have on hand is the AAP Green Book, which is the handbook on pediatric environmental health. And another resource is the National Network of Pediatric Environmental Health Specialty Units. So there's an environmental pediatrics expert in each federal region. They can assist you in answering your questions um, that you're faced with in the primary pediatric clinical setting. Mm -hmm.